If you've been into 3D printing and you're thinking about getting into CNC or maybe just bought a machine, you should know your library of 3D objects can be utilized inside Carbide Create. Kevin Barnett back in the Carbide 3D studio showing you how to use STLs. And you might say, didn't you just do a video on this? Don't you have a whole education series on this particular topic? The answer is yes, but it turns out CNC is like ogres. It involves a solitary male that desires to be away from the rest of society? Uh, well, yeah, maybe that's it. Actually, CNC and ogres both have layers. Oh, you both have layers. That gives us a lot more to dive into here with a second video working with STLs. All new information, tips, tricks, ideas, and strategies are on their way to you right now. Step one is deciding what kind of object you'd like to make. Here, I'm gonna take this design and put it inside of a drop tray. So I first have to construct an outer vector line for my drop tray, and in this case, it's just gonna be a simple rectangle. I'm gonna align it to my stock, center, center. Then I'll go into import STL, and I'm just gonna grab another purchased file, in this case, a pair of territorial rams. The initial import comes in perpendicular to my tray and too small, some work to do. I'll start by altering the angle and clicking apply makes that change. Two options for resizing, either drag the corners to make it bigger or smaller, or manipulate the XY scale. The more experience you gain, the faster you'll be with this process. With those rams perfectly proportioned, it's time to name the component. In this case, rams 3D. Naming your components is an absolute must for organized file making. Next up is the amount of relief for your STL object. Initially, I'm gonna take this value to five. Five's looking pretty beefy. I'm not sure I want five. I'm gonna knock this back to four and call it good. When working with add and subtract inside the 3D tool, it is very much like a math problem. You can add and subtract in any order you wish, but the result will be the same. Here, I'll build the tray under my initial rams. This second component is named main body and extruded to 18 millimeters close to the value of our stock, which for the moment means our rams are outside of our available stock, which is indicated by their red color but we're gonna correct that in just a moment. Now it's time to create the cutback or inset. Here I'll use offset path to create the inner vector. Seven millimeters should provide a nice edge to our tray. For creation of our next component, I'll utilize that inner contour. Tray inset will be the name of this component. The key will be the relationship between our STL RAMS artwork and the edge of that inner component. This component is going to be a subtract and the value that will be manipulated is the angle. While you're making changes, be sure to make liberal use of the 3D simulation. Here, you can see that parts of my design are still exceeding my stock, and parts of my STL are intruding upon the edges of the tray. By changing the angle of the inset, I'll be able to correct that relationship. All right, a few more setting changes, a little bit more tweaking. You get the idea. We're putting the RAMS 3D element in the bottom of this tray and leaving enough room for our tooling to get past the edge of the tray and our design. We're gonna use a 202 one quarter inch ball end mill, so I have to leave a little more space. 70 degrees looks like the value that's gonna work on this project. Tray inset complete, time for tool pathing. Both the 3D rough and the 3D finish will be assigned to that outer vector. These two tool paths will bring in every feature except for the chamfers and the outer contour. The end mills involved are the 201 and 202 quarter inch bits. For speeds and feeds, I went just as fast as I did in the pine. With both tool paths, I went up to 5,000 millimeters per minute. Roughing depth of cut, two millimeters. Stock to leave, 0.35 millimeters. All of this done at 24,000 RPMs. For work holding, I'm a big fan of super glue and blue tape. It allows me to make one full depth, complete pass around my object. For more step-by-step -step information, be sure and check out my.carbide3d.com. I break down the STL import as well as a whole bunch of other features in the 3D tool. As with anything, there is no substitute for practice. Get out and make something. The more you do this, the better you're gonna get. This project is only gonna take three end mills, couldn't be easier, and it runs about an hour on the machine. Let's do it up. Here comes a machining montage.
I couldn't be happier with the results of this 3D Rams tray. Remember, post finishing is going to vary by your material. I did zero sanding of the 3D features of this particular item when it was cut into oak. Oak's pretty sturdy, but it is very strandy. I would cut the long side of your project and run your 3D tool pathing across the grain. My favorite hardwoods for machining are walnut and maple. They do a terrific job of taking details and with just an oil finish look outstanding. If you want to check out this file, make one yourself or use this tray as a basis for a build of your own. It's available on Cut Rocket right now. The link is in the description. That's it from the studio. We'll be back with more information, ideas, and inspiration.